Well, in case you didn't know, this past week, uh, we, um, I don't know if you want to say celebrate. Maybe, maybe that's the wrong word. We want to be made aware of the fact that it's been Invasive Species Week uh, right across the country. And uh, to help us get a better understanding of what uh, some of the threats are here in our province, a real pleasure to welcome Nicole Kimmel. She's the Aquatic Invasive Species Specialist for the province of Alberta. Uh, good morning, Nicole and thanks for taking a little bit of time. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So uh, let's talk a little bit about invasive species here in Alberta. Um, it was uh, with some interest that I read a, a, a story out of Saskatchewan that I guess uh, Prussian carp are, are starting to make their presence felt in our neighboring province uh, coming in through the South Saskatchewan River. Yeah, so we detect them uh, first, and now that we have uh, an abundance of Prussian carp, we are now sharing them with Saskatchewan uh, through our connected waterways. So do we know just how many are, are moving downstream and into the into Saskatchewan? Can they provide some, some facts and figures for to help you understand it as well? So we've, we've joined forces uh, in the past few years with the Albert Conservation Association to do some mapping to see where they are being found. We know that they're being found quite extensively in four watersheds. Um, so that includes the Red Deer River, the Bow River, the South Saskatchewan and the Old Man. Uh, we have quite a few locations that are getting up in population to where we're getting to see thousands in a water body. With that many, um, is angling, uh, allowing anglers to, to catch as many as they can, is that still seems to be the most effective way to, to go after them? So that's that's really what we're left with for a response is our, our catch and kill it. So we've uh, not regulated them in any shape or fashion. So you can catch as many as you want, any shape or size. Um, but yeah, they reproduce pretty prolifically and any angling that we do get, you know, removing some, it will be compensated quite fast with the reproduction amount that they can compensate with. Do we know what, uh, or, or I guess maybe the, other, the question should be, are you monitoring other fish species within those water bodies where the carp are, are prevalent and, and monitoring what kind of longer term impact they're going to have on more of our native fish species? So we haven't been able to get out and quantify the actual impacts, but we have anecdotal reports from our fish uh, fisheries bios that they are seeing native fisheries start to dwindle and the Prussian carp rise. So they are definitely out competing our fish and we will be seeing some declines in fish. So not a, not a great news story there, is it? No, it's a really tricky species to address because anything we do to remove the Prussian carp will actually be targeting all the other fish as well. So there's nothing that's selective, just a Prussian carp. When we look at, uh, you know, and I guess we really don't know how the carp got into, into our natural water bodies, but one of the other issues that you are dealing with, and we do know how it's happening, and that's people releasing goldfish and that type of thing into storm ponds recently uh, just before Christmas I guess you guys were in Lethbridge doing a, um, a public service um, announcement about the number of goldfish in storm ponds there um, so it, it's becoming an issue right across Alberta and for whatever reason people just aren't getting the idea that releasing goldfish is a bad idea. Yeah, unfortunately, we're, we know of about 70, over 70 uh, water bodies in Alberta that have goldfish. So, and we seem to be finding more and more every year. So, yeah, we're, we're really pushing that don't let it loose message because it is a difficult problem to tackle once they're introduced. If we can get people to stop introducing them, we'd be uh, ahead of the game in prevention. Yeah. I, I guess the, the question is why folks are doing this. Is it just not understanding that, you know, look, it's, it's, it's bad that you, that, that you, uh, you, you feel bad, I guess, that you have to maybe kill a goldfish. Um, the kids aren't looking after it or, or whatever the, the issue is, but uh, uh, getting that environmental message out just doesn't seem to be uh, catching on. Yeah, we, we are struggling trying to make that um, connection with folks that anything you do and release into the environment will have detrimental impacts. And 
it might seem innocent enough that you're, you know, just putting it in your back pond, but those ponds connect to our natural waterways where our fish are, are quite reliant on the, on the food and habitat that they, they acquire. So. Currently, Nicole, are there any fines associated if someone is caught releasing goldfish uh, into a storm pond or anywhere else? Yeah, so the fines can be very extensive if we do catch someone in the act of releasing. So they can go up to $100,000. That's how serious it can be. But the, the problem is, is catching folks in the act is required for those fines. Uh, maybe it's a, a network of, I hate to say it, cameras uh, at, at storm pond locations 24-7. I don't know. Uh, it's uh, getting to a point where it's getting really, really scary. Yeah, we, we've had some public members actually step in and stop some introductions of, of introduced fish into ponds. So, so the message is getting out to some key folks and they are taking it upon themselves to protect their water bodies that they are uh, deeply invested in. So it is working, but yeah, there's still more work to do. Well, we are getting close to that time of year, of course, uh, Nicole, where... Um you know, other, other uh, programs, uh, especially the, the Zebra Watch program, um, uh, Clean Drain Dry, uh, maybe not the influx of outside provincial and, and up from the states vehicles and boats coming into Alberta. But nonetheless, I imagine uh, just keeping Alberta boaters uh, aware of uh, the Zebra and Quagga mussel issue is, is, uh, is still a big project for you. Yeah, so that's where we spend a lot of our time and our, our season has actually already started. Uh, so in the middle of February, we already detected our first muscle felled boat coming into Alberta. So it's as early as February, we start seeing those boats coming into the province. So our, our prevention lines are trying to stay uh, on top of it as early in the winter. Was that, a, was that a catch with one of your sniffer dogs or was that one of the, the trained personnel? It was actually uh, a notification from the Border Services Agency they notified us a boat was coming through and we waited the, the two weeks quarantine period to follow up. And when we follow up, we did find uh, it infested with mussels. So this was a boat coming up from the States? Yes. And do we know how or why somebody coming across the border was was uh, uh, with, a, with an infected boat nonetheless? <laughs> So it, it could be, you know, snowbirds are quite often, you know, jumping around the border. But uh, this case was actually a, a boat owner purchased a boat to re um, overhaul and and make modifications to. So it was actually just a purchased boat. So, wow. Well, it is certainly a good thing that uh, you folks are out there uh, keeping an eye on all of this. And uh, I guess uh, having a, a week named after invasive species uh, just uh, goes to help heighten the awareness of uh, the public and, and the real issue that's faced uh, here in Alberta and places across the country about uh, these invasive species and the damage that they can do to our, our freshwater resources. Nicole, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. And I guess um, just a, a final thing, if folks are concerned about whether they see an aquatic invasive species or, or um, uh, vegetation, is there a, a um, information that they can go to to get more or or more importantly notify you about what they have seen yeah so if anybody needs to make a report of anything weird in the water um it's our toll-free aquatic invasive species hotline at 1-855-336 boat outstanding nicole thank you so much and we will no doubt be talking to you uh, a little bit later on this summer to see how things are moving along thank you